Welcome to episode two of Simon Says, and thanks to Leighton House for bringing this to you. Today we're going to be working on grey coverage, so uh, it's a big market, so let's get on in and cover some grey. Okay, this is Marie. Marie uh, is one of my clients also. Um, has some resistant, prematurely grey hair, I say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's quite resistant uh, and it's something that uh, is a huge market for us um, as hairdressers. That's sometimes neglected, I feel. So Leighton House has a great coverage program. You know, all of the naturals will cover up to a blended 100%. When I say blended, it is a blended result. It doesn't block it out. And then we have a double natural range, which I will be using today, which I think is fantastic. And that will give us block coverage on those unwanted gray hairs, as Marie would want, I would say. So um, that is our hero product today, the double naturals. We're going to be mixing in a little bit of reflect as well because we don't want it just to be flat and boring it is a little the color story is quite a lived in look which i really love so it goes from dark to light which i think gives a really believable result so we let the hair organically happen like that and it ends up in this beautiful light color sometimes i refresh that other times i just let that be but i put a regrowth on and then I smudge it out with my fingers. It's quite creative. Rather than just putting a regrowth on, I'm getting it on and I'm breaking it up and pushing it through with my hands and that just smudges it out so I have no start finish line, no brush marks. Um, so it's a technique that I encourage you to use because it just pushes us as professional hairdressers just up that notch. And I think that's what we've got to do. It's a value-added thing. So we're going to talk more about the product, um, some resistant mix ideas for you. Um, that will help you cover all grey heads of hair and make them fashionable. They shouldn't have to have boring heads of hair. It should be about being cool all the way through just because you've got grey hair. It doesn't mean you're not cool. <laughs> so let's get cracking on that. Leighton House has for us is a double natural series. So that is going to give us a block colour. So what we want to do is block out all of those grey hairs today. So we're going to use a double seven zero. So what with that, I don't want to leave it just natural. So I'm going to add something like a 7-3-2. We're going to go a half-half mix. But what we're doing is introducing illuminates and it's a 0 0.2 in illuminates. What that's going to do is cool down my 7-3-2, which is a predominantly gold. So I want to switch those 3-2s to a 2-3 by just adding 10% of this product. So what that is going to do is get control over that color. I just don't want it too warm. I want to just control that, that amount of gold. So with most color brands, they push you into using a 6%. With Leighton House, we're lucky enough to have a lift and deposit built into the tint. So we only have to go to a lower developer being a 3%. But because Marie's hair is a little bit more resistant, we're going to use the resistant mix. So instead of a 1, one to 1 1.5, we're going to go to 1 plus one, so even portions of developer and tint. So that's gonna saturate the hair with a little bit more pigment and we're gonna get a better result. So we're gonna to go to the 6%. So let's get mixing the color. So this is my double seven point zero. Marie's gonna to to have a lot of hair, so I'm gonna mix quite a bit of product. In saying that, it goes a long way. It's always good to measure out your products. I like to be really accurate in this field. So gram to gram, be really quite vigilant on that. Write it down, don't forget it. So we're just gonna put the 10% of the 0.2 illuminates in now. our six percent remember it's one plus one so even portions from tint to developer again I like to use 
a stick to mix. Just keeps it nice and clean and neat and doesn't get color all over your brush. Again, the odor of the tint is, is fantastic. It's not really harsh on the nose, which is everything. Imagine it sitting on your head. I think it's really important for, you know, this with clients sitting there and it on their scalp, they don't want a harsh smelling product. So this product is beautiful. It mixes lovely. It's got a lovely shine and smells great. We're gonna go in with the Extra Natural as our base for Marie's regrowth. It is quite resistant hair, but it's not hair that really, you know, that really tough, wiry hair that will give you a lot of resistance. So if that's the case, we have a mix to do a pre-softening or a pre-pigmentation. So with that, what we do is we mix one shade lighter than your target shade. We'll mix it one-to-one -one with water, and then we apply that to the really extremely resistant areas for 10 minutes. And then we come back in with our tint and we go straight over the top of that with our target shade. So with those hairlines that really will show look a little bit translucent and you want to cover those up and you've had a problem with those, this product will do all the work. So I'm not going to do that today because I just don't think we have hair that coarse. It is thick, but it's not coarse and the product will be more than enough to cover that regrowth. You can always reference this as a resource in the technical manual, which can be downloaded on the website. Um, and it has all of those, those you know, bits and pieces that you really need, you know, whether you're covering 70% of, of gray hair or 100%, whether you want to block out. All the information is there and it's at our fingertips. So it's already done for us. So no, you probably wouldn't do that in front of the client, but you could go out the back and then get the technical manual up, have it printed out even, and use it as a resource. It's there for you. So it's a great tool. Let's get on in color. I'm just gonna go down the center. I apply to the, the, the grayest area first, and that would be the front hairline. So I'm gonna block all of that out first. I'm gonna go down the center strip, ear to ear. We'll go back panels, front panels. Just give it that ch a chance to get extra pigment on that front hairline. Because when we move back here, it definitely isn't as grey toward the back. Again, be really liberal with your product application. coverage products, extra naturals, naturals, and a natural ash. They're gonna give us that 100% coverage. Today, we're going with the extra naturals. We're going in nice and heavy with the product onto the roots. Just coming up to that line. Don't be light-handed with this. Nice and strong, you need plenty of color on the hair. It goes a long way. It spreads really well into the hair. It's cream. Go to ear to ear now. thing about extra naturals is they contain extra pigment the, the result is right on that color swatch it won't go any darker it won't it's just an extra natural to give you this that little bit more pigment for that resistant hair Simon says my top three tips for covering resistant gray hair
come to the front panel now. Again, just working through really systematically, clean sections, being really liberal with my, my application. So I have plenty of color on the brush. I'm not wiping it off, I'm putting it onto the hair. And then what we're going to do when we finish this application is stretch the color out with my hands. I'm not going to use a brush for that. So that is a little bit more creative. I love to add that to a basic tint, is if I can be creative in every movement, I'm having a good day. Just finishing off my hairline a little bit more intricate. Make sure you've got all of those little hairs and pressing them back, looking back here on this angle. And I come in with my finger and I just give it a little bit of a press to just make sure I've got all of those little hairs in on the mix. Processing for this resistant is 40 minutes. So it's an extra five to 10 minutes on the normal processing time. That ensures us perfect coverage. Now what I wanna do is basically stretch this out a little bit. So just wiggle my fingers through like this, pushing the tint back onto the already colored hair. So going around the hairline first, it's good to keep one hand quite clean with this because you don't want to get too much color past the mid lengths. Dividing it up, just fingertips, yeah? So it's not as technical, this is freer. And that's how I love working, with a little bit of freedom, giving it a little bit more thought. And that's why that client's gonna be connected to you. They'll only have you do their hair in that shop because you do this to them. Just push it that little bit extra. So this is a Simon Says technique, and it's a little bit of freedom in this. I'm just dividing the hair up with my fingers and I'm pushing the hair into the mid length. So I don't wanna to go toward the ends, I just wanna stretch it out a little bit. That's gonna give me this beautiful blend into the already colored hair. Okay, I'm gonna rinse Marie's color off now. What I like to do when I'm rinsing any darker color is just get a bit of moisture on the hair first. And then I put the hose down and work on that hairline. So color will remove color. And if I just rub around that, and then just use the color itself to emulsify, and then just delicately around the ear, that I won't get a really hard line of color on the, on the skin. Just by adding water, it just breaks it up a little bit and it allows us to sort of work it off like that. And then I can just go back to my rinsing. Okay, we're back from the base and look at this beautiful result. Great coverage. Beautiful condition on pretty resistant hair. So I'm really impressed with the luster, the blend from this color to that color. There's no start stop line. And that is all about technique and smudging. I'm really happy with this result. I'm sure Marie is going to be as well. We're gonna get onto the styling now. So I'm gonna use Couture Care All Purpose 6-in-1. It's got six different qualities. So one of it is all about moisture and repair, detangles the hair. It also gives us a little bit of body. What I love to use this with the most is to cut with because it's quite seamless through the comb. But what that does with the client, it doesn't dry the hair out too quickly. It basically just keeps my sections nice and straight and I can work that into the hair. And as the hair's drying and I add heat, it starts to activate. So it's a fantastic product. It can be used a few different ways. We can spray it in, which I think is its, it's hero. You can spray it, it's a really fine mist, or we can go into the hand. If you come up close, you'll see this. It's, this is like a, a salesman's dream. Look at that, it comes, when you spray it like that, it becomes a cream. And then we can rub it on our hands, get a little bit everywhere, and then pop it all the way through. So 
I like to get a little bit of product on every hair, not a lot on some. It's really important. So what I do is I get it through, I work it all the way through like this, rake it through with my fingers, and then I get my comb involved all the way through. There's no risk of missing a patch of hair. And we need to be, we need to be educating our clients to do this always. A little bit on every hair, not a lot on some. comes to blow drying now, what we're going to do is do a wrap dryer. What I like to use is a cushion brush. You could also use a Demnum brush. What I find is that sometimes I catch the ear with the Demnum brush, it's a little bit less forgiving than something like this. So I can run it over the, over the ear and I'm forgiven. So what we're going to do is wrap the hair this way and then we're going to wrap it back the opposite way. What that does is lifts the hair up, it dries the roots and the mid lengths and then I'm going to finish off the ends with a round brush. So what that's going to do is control the hair. I want to have total control of this blow dry, but the foundation is the wrap dry. Without that, my blow dry won't last. I want them to leave my shop with the best blow dry they have in that whole period. They go and they tell their friends and they talk about you. So it can be something that small that can make a difference. So I put a lot of pride and a lot of effort into my blow dry. weapon of choice is the Dyson Supersonic. It's changed my life. In, in, in saying that, it's, uh, it's shorter, it's lighter, it's weighted better, it's made for us to keep our elbows down so we don't end up with this sore, tired arm. The noise is amazing, it doesn't make any. It's so quiet. I can talk to my client at this level and I don't have to shout over the top of a blow dryer. Um, change the whole way we do things and I think uh, this will be a sign of things to come with blow dryers, it's beautiful. I'm going to put some aluminum oil in now. It's lightweight formula, it's going to blow dry the hair 10% quicker which is a big plus. It's got a beautiful shimmery shine and it's got keratin amino acids and linseed oil which is beautiful for that lustrous shine. Smells beautiful. And it's lightweight for me, it gives very forgiving. Sometimes an oil can be quite heavy. This is beautiful. And I also like to comb this all the way through, even though I'm working it through with my hands, I like to get a comb and then work that through roots to end so I don't miss one hair on the head. You can already see the shine coming in there. You can, put, you can put this product on damp or dry, and as I said, it gives you a 10% quicker blow dry. So let's put it on both if you like. You could just put it on to finish, but it's great, and this is where it works hardest when you put it on damp hair. blow dry and I am going to add one more product to this and it is the control cream so you can use that as a styling product in wet which works really well I like working with it with curly hair it blow dries in beautifully it's also a great cutting agent but for this purpose I'm just going to use it just to control these little new hairs and flyaways here so lightly going over the shape and I'm just going to glue them down Glue is probably the wrong word, but I'm just going to mold them down into the rest of the hair so they don't fly away. But first, I'm, going, I'm not cutting today. I'm just going to bust this up. And I do this a lot with clients rather than, you know, refreshing the whole haircut. I kind of like it because it's a broken line bob. It's a little bit deconstructed. But what I want to come back in and do is just take the weight out. It's quite thick hair. So what I like to do is just comb that over my hand like this. And this is great for removing weight in the middle of the hair. So I simply just cut up into the hair like this. 
just through those mid sections. So you want to cut straight, not sideways, big problem. So we go in like that and then you watch the amount of weight that comes out of there, all of that hair here. So it's quite a bit of hair, but what you keep is a bit of line on the hair. So there's already some weight through here. I just want to get rid of the weight through here because it just gets a bit bobby and a little bit dated. And that gives the hair a little bit of texture. So when it moves, not only the color looks great, the hair looks seamless as well. Now what I want to do is just get a bit, a little bit of air in there, just float it around a little bit. And what you'll see is the texture in the hair and you'll also see the colour move. It's really beautiful colour, nice and seamless. It's blended beautifully into this existing colour. It seems crazy going into, into a haircut, a blow dry that you've done and you've polished it and perfected it and then you ruffle it up. But for me, texture is king and I really like hair that moves. And these products work really well with that because they're not setting the hair like a helmet. I want the hair to move and I want when she walks out of the salon, I love watching someone walk out of my salon, their hair's swinging. Because that's what everyone else sees. And if it looks beautiful, my business gets busier. That's what it's all about. So we've got control cream going in now, just a very little amount. I don't, I don't need much at all. When I use too much, I keep it on the back of my hands, as in my palm, top of the palm. Work it through to my fingertips, get it on like a hand cream, and then I can just lightly go through with my fingertips, and then lightly go over those little flyaway hairs just to control the hair. And this will also create a little bit of light separation on the rest of the hair. These little highlighted ends will just come to into their own. Another great tip, a simple Simon tip is a neck brush and then just lightly go over the hair with that. So it's not a brush. I like to just sort of control the hair. If I'm doing a photo shoot, I use this all the time. Just, just basically controlling the hair without combing and I'm just patting over the top of the hair and it just helps me control the look. wrap it up. Marie's happy, I'm happy, 100% happy and we've got 100% coverage which is really what we were talking about is coverage on grey hair and we've got exactly that. It's a beautiful colour, there's no compromise on tone. We used a half-half mix if you remember 77.0 and 7.232 and then we put 10% of 0.2 illuminates in. So that just flipped it around and cooled us down and gave us this beautiful tone. I'm really happy with it. It moves beautifully when it moves around and you can just see lovely seamless hair by chopping a little bit of weight out. It just moves around, but the color looks spectacular. Really happy with that. That concludes this episode. Thanks for watching. See you soon. See you.